Welcome to Financial Discretion Advise. Uh, my name is Tyler Hafford doing a, a bit of out of schedule podcast here. I want to talk a bit about uh, what's going on in Europe uh, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine and uh, how that's impacting the market and how investors should be viewing stuff like this and how it fits into historical context for other military actions. Um, at first, I'd like to uh, kind of point out that I'm going to talk a lot about market statistics and recovery times and down draws and, and, and things like that. Don't want to overshadow kind of the devastation that's happening in Europe right now. Um, and, and certainly kind of our, our thoughts go out to anyone impacted um, by what's happening uh, in, in Ukraine. Um, don't want that to get lost in kind of the numbers I'm about to go through. But want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the market and what we've seen in other military actions in the market response uh, throughout history, especially since 1940, because I think that's a good kind of uh, span for us to, to view in the U.S. stock market. But what, what we're seeing right now is that the market is into this correction level. And Jim Bradley and I did a podcast uh, just recently where we talked about market corrections. And that's just a reminder, market falls between 10 and 20 percent. On average, uh, that's happening in the, in the market every 13 to 16 months. Been a little spoiled lately. Um, but when we look at the lifespan of the market, that's how uh, often we see those. Recovery time on a correction tends to be around three to four months. What we don't know is, will this become a bear market? And that's if the market falls below 20%. If that's the case, that happens on average every three and a half to four years. Recovery time around 10 months. Uh, we just had one in March of 2020. Um, and the NASDAQ recently dipped its toes into uh, bear, bear market territory. Uh, I'd say that the correction, the bear market in 2020 uh, was a bit artificial, right? We turned on the economy on and off. Um, and, and saw that drawdown. So I don't know if that's a, we call that a healthy function of the market, um, but they do happen. Um, this certainly could end up being a bear market. Uh, we don't know that yet, but what we do know is that what spurred the initial sell-off was uh, the Fed coming in and saying, we're going to raise some rates uh, to, to control inflation. The market doesn't like those tools, uh, especially the speed in which the Fed said that they were going to do it. And we saw this kind of initial sell-off. And then we saw this pre-war period uh, before Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, where it seemed to be we were heading in that direction and the market was responding kind of in this drawdown. That's not uncommon when we look at military action uh, since 1940. It, we normally see the, the market kind of take a, a bit of a dive there. There is something out there. It's kind of the, the puzzle for the market. On this pre-war period does cause valuations to decrease in stocks. But once that military action happens, we actually see an increase in uh, stock prices. And we actually saw that. So I'm recording this today on Monday, February 28th. Uh, last Thursday, uh, Russia started their invasion of the Ukraine. The market opened uh, quite low and then saw a surge back into the, into the green territory, followed on Friday by the biggest uh, day in the stock market since 2020. Now, today's Monday, some, some variations going on. Uh, right now, we'll have to see where things land. But it's uh, a strange phenomenon where we do see that reduction in prices and then a increase once the military action uh, takes place. Now, what we can see is uh, since 1940, there's been a number of military actions uh, across the globe. Um, and how has the market responded to that? Well, when we look since 1940, there's a military action the S&P tends to have that downside that I'm talking about. Within one month, the S&P is back into positive territory after those military actions, 66.6% .6 of the time. And then if we look one year out from that uh, military action, it's in positive territory 80% of the time. So a lot of quick recovery from these geopolitical military actions. And I think what's happening, uh, and, and obviously, this could be wrong, but my, my assumption is there is so much uncertainty leading up to the military action that the market is selling off because they don't know what this is going to look like. They don't know what the war is going to look like. They don't know what economic situation is going to look like. And then once it happens, there's a little bit more certainty around sanctions and, and uh, banking industries and, and what's going to happen to financials, those types of things that allow investors to trade uh, based on a little bit more knowledge. And 
just to talk about how quickly things can recover, we'll take a look at some military action uh, throughout history where 9-11 uh, happened, uh, 2001, uh, market fell one day drawdown 4.9%. Uh, the total drawdown on the S&P through that uh, incident in, in history was 11.6%. Took us 11 days to hit the bottom, 31 days to have a recovery. So a little over a month to see a recovery there. Uh, when we take a look at the, the Korean War back in 1950, North Korea invades South Korea, drawdown uh, of 5.4% uh, was the biggest uh, daily drawdown. Total drawdown on that uh, throughout that period was negative 12.9% on the S&P. Took us 20, uh, sorry, 143 days, sorry, 23 days to hit the bottom, 82 days to see a recovery. So less than three months to see a recovery on that. Um, when we take a look at uh, the Iraq invasion of Kuwait, day drawdown 1.1%, total drawdown for, for that event 16.9%. Again, bottom took us 71 days to get to, uh, recovery 189 days. So well below, you know, less than that year. The biggest, kind of the longest uh, recovery we had to see was falling Pearl Harbor, uh, right? So obviously right in World War II, uh, 1941, biggest drawdown day on Pearl Harbor is negative 3.8%. Uh, total drawdown on the market, down 19.8%. Took us 143 days to hit the bottom uh, of that market drawdown, 307 days, so less than a year to see that recovery. Um, actually, when we look at the start of World War II uh, until it ended, in, so 1939 to 1945, the Dow was actually up a total of 50%, more than 7% a year through that period. And when we look at the two worst wars in modern history, the U.S. stock market was up a combined 115% through that, that period of time. So all of these statistics are not to say that this might be different. This could certainly be a different impact. And I think a lot of what goes on in the energy market is going to dictate a lot of, uh, of market movement. But what we see historically is that these military and geopolitical actions actually see a pretty quick recovery. And the reason why I bring that up for investors is, while this uncertainty of rates and inflation and geopolitical action out there all seem a bit daunting and can be worrisome when we're taking a look at the market, when we put it in historical context and look at, all right, how often does the market fall this much? How quickly does it recover? What happens if there is war uh, in different parts of the world? We can understand what the recoveries look like and be better investors because of it. So if you are working right now and continuously um, putting money into a 401k or into your investments, you're buying in at, at cheaper valuations right now, well, if, you know, will the market fall any further? That's yet to be seen. But what we do know right now is that the market's at a bit of a discount, about 14, 12 to 14%, depending on what index we're looking at. Um, and, and we have room to let this kind of come back, and historically it has. Every correction and uh, bear market in, in U.S. history has recovered. We're 100%. We just got to give it the time to do so, and that'll be the case here. And, and my statistics are just trying to give us a frame of mind of how quickly that process can happen. Now, if you are drawing money out in retirement, obviously these drawdowns can be worrisome. Um, so if you have the ability to kind of mute your, your withdrawals or not take out a big chunk uh, to handle kind of one-off purchases right now, that might be a good idea. Let the market recover to, to, to allow you to do so. Um, but, you know, the recovery has always come. And I think the big thing as investors to, is to trust in the U.S. stock market, what we've seen in history, what we've seen in, in you know, past military um actions around the world and how that's impact the market and trust that those, you know, the recovery is, is uh, going to come and, and, and we can be better investors because of it. So bit of a uh, kind of ad hoc uh, podcast here, just wanted to talk around uh, what's going on in the market, what we can expect, what we've seen historically, please, if you have any questions, leave them below. I uh, would be happy to kind of dive into anything more. Uh, my email's on our website, penobscotfa.com. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that the market does reverse course and things in Europe improve. Um, again, our thoughts go out to anyone impacted by 
uh, kind of the tragedy that's happening there um, right now. Uh, please like, share, uh, check out our webpage um, and other videos here on our YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. The foregoing content reflects the opinions of Penobscot Financial Advisors and is subject to change at any time without notice. Content provided herein is for informational purposes only and should not be used or construed as investment advice or a recommendation regarding the purchase or sale of any security. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Thank you.